Now, let's get to brass tacks. Let's get to the, 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 the main agenda for the day, which has to do with government policies or flagship programs and the review. And it's been, it's been a big conversation this, this week. Um, we're not too sure what, ex what exactly is happening. Is it that the programs have been, um, have been in the review for some time now? Or it is the case that the IMF is breathing down our necks for us to take a second look at some of these programs. So Kujo Pankram will be joining us uh, shortly via Zoom to set the record straight on that. But let's start with Mr. Franklin Kujo, who is the founding president of Ivani Africa. Franklin, good morning. Good to have you. Good morning, Moro. Good morning to your producers. Good morning to my good friend Kujo um, and everybody watching. Yes, um, Kujo Pankro will be joining us shortly. It's, um, it's, it's tidying a few things up. Um, I'm sure in the next few minutes you'll join us, uh, perhaps after we're, we're done with you. Now, Franklin, I don't know what you make of this whole talk about government flagship programs under review, um, because you have consistently been asking for a review of some of these programs, never mind the position that you took right from the get-go about some of these flagship programs. That's a, that's a separate conversation for another day. But you've been on this case about reviewing government program reviewing. So when you heard about, um, again, Kujo Pankrumah saying that the review process is actually the start something that started last year, what, what, what sense do you make of all of these? Well, you know, ordinarily, um, every program, project, or policy, if you like, uh, has an inherent um, plan a plan to review at some point. I mean, that, I would have thought that would be the normal course of things, right? Um, so I'm not entirely, you know, should I say surprised, or should I be surprised that uh, a review process would have been so politicized to this extent that uh, it will cause uh, a minister to say that, well, it has been on the table probably last year or at the point in time. I mean, I would have thought that it should be part of a normal process anyway. Uh, to the credit of this government, I think the last administration, which is the first term, tenor, first term of the president, uh, there was the Monetary and Evaluation uh, Ministry, right, you recall. And, I, and we did some work with them when we're reviewing government, uh, should I say, promises that had been made. And we found out that, well, they were doing a human's job. I mean, even though we quarreled at a point in time that uh, why have a separate ministry to do that? Because, as it were, every ministry agency or government uh, ministry department or agency automatically will have a policy wing that would, be norm would, would normally be reviewing these things anyway. But of course, the understanding was that, well, you know, sometimes it's better to have uh, an entity which is probably separate from the um, from the mother entity to, so that they can do proper reviews and, and somehow people will fear if there's an external entity uh, uh, that is doing that. And so we, we thought it was a good thing. And so it's a bit befu befuddling, if you, if you ask me, um to to have had this conversation about i mean to have had this political conversation about review because clearly speaking it should be a normal process anyway i mean look look at the if we, if we take into consideration the um the flash a project like leap i mean uh, never mind that it was uh, originated by the president before but obviously invested by do this every year or so or every tenor after after every two years or three years it is reviewed right that's the only way we are able to determine uh how many people ought to be on the leap and then essentially how much should be given to them so if for basic projects like this which are livelihood dependent could be reviewed how much more multi-million cd multi-million dollar uh project that we have voted for with our money so i think generally i i have a problem if anybody would suggest that a review should only happen at the point in time and and and, and probably much worse um uh should even be politicized at all so these are my opening remarks now what kind of review would you want to see well um Moro, if you if you if you borrow money, if 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 a bank lends you money to undertake a project, uh, it is not for the Christmas. The bank obviously is not for the Christmas. So what happens is that you know you'd have to pay back with interest, and so you are invested in making sure 
that almost every quarter or every half quarter, half half year, or depending on how your own business cycle looks like, the reporting cycle looks like, you would have to do some introspection, right? And that introspection will take into consideration how much you've invested, what the returns are looking like, and, and the ability to pay back your loan. I would have thought that with government money as well. And don't forget, government obviously first does not have anything, unless, of course, it takes from everybody in order to give to itself, in order to prosecute the project, apparently on our behalf, right? So it is the same thing. Government is supposed to be a body corporate, probably should act more like a body corporate that obviously acts on our behalf after taking our money or take money in, in our name. And so as a matter of course, those things should be should be done. I mean, the point I'm making is that it should be part and parcel of the DNA of any establishment, or government or private, um, that especially uh, acts on behalf of, 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 of its investors uh, to be able to undertake these things. And so at, at the least, I'd have expected that this should happen. The other thing that I probably would say that um, maybe in place of the Ministry, Ministry for Monitoring and Evaluation, we had a fiscal council. I mean, the fiscal council, which we all welcome because again, I mean, it's one of the institutions that to the credit of this government uh, seem to have been given some sort of faith. When I say faith, there was someone in the name of Paul Aqua, Dr. Paul Aqua, who uh, I don't know if he's still there though, um, was sort of the first uh, uh, um, director of sorts to manage the fiscal council. We never read, I've not seen a single report of the fiscal council um reviewing these if you like mega projects because as a matter of course the fiscal council is to, is to ensure some are reigning government uh programs that that would have uh implications for our budgets and, and all of that so um it is not for me to design a project should i a, a template and say this is exactly how it should be done all i'm saying is that if you start a project you've got to make sure that there are opportunities, there are, in fact, there are not even opportunities, there are guidelines that would ensure that we review so that you can ask yourself, am I spending too much with the Ministry for Special Development Initiative, which incidentally had lots of money, right? Huge amounts of money. And unfortunately, because it was housed at the, at the presidency, it became very difficult to monitor its activities, right? But if you had a ministry like that, superintending one village, one dam, uh, all the pipe projects and all of that. It is important that at least, at the very least, we should have seen some documentation as to how these things were going and not wait for groups like the Peasant Farmers Association of Ghana to come out and say, well, these dams are just um, oasis. Uh, I've forgotten the term they gave it, but they, they are not really dams. And that's uh, just a few of them actually delivering what is expected of them. And you don't wait for the President of the Farmers Association of Ghana to come out and tell you that the planting of food and jobs has been hijacked. I mean, the inputs, fertilizer inputs have been hijacked by some uh, middlemen and all of that. And at the very least, even if you got this feedback, it is important that you then, you know, take them in good faith and then start to review. So um, there's been quite a lot that has been said. And, 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 and I think that it is important that the conversation about reviews, as I said, should not have been a political matter at all, and that it should have been, as a matter of course, part and parcel of a project. I mean, that's what is done really in every way. Um, sorry, my oh. penultimate question to you would be, we've heard Kojo Ponkrumah say there's a criteria uh, by which some of these review exercises is going to be undertaken. One, they're going to be looking at effectiveness, they're going to be looking at efficiency, and I stand to be corrected, I think they're looking at cost, um, uh, how do you call it, um, how do you call it, um, oh, well, you know, they, they'll do a, a, a cost-benefit analysis, sort of. Do, do you think mm -hmm. this suffices? Well, without a doubt, I mean, a cost-benefit analysis or whatever you call it, uh, value uh, vested interest analysis, which is the which is actually the one I prefer mostly, especially when it comes to government project vested interest analysis, because as you know, um, people have all kinds of interests when projects are, uh, are conceptualized and then somehow implemented. So, no matter the tool you want to adopt, the point I'm making is that as a matter of course, it should have been part and parcel of the original design. Um, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I never even thought that the president should even quibble over this matter of review. 
it probably shouldn't have been, um, you know, if you like, uh, uh, led by John Mama, who called for a review. And then all of a sudden, we are latching onto what John has said. And then because if John says it, uh, and if we did something about it, then we'd have been following John's steps. I think all those conversations were not necessary. I would have thought that the best response would have been that, well, as Kojo said, we have adopted the criteria and maybe we would, would go ahead and do it. I have a problem with the timing of it. Because you see, the should, should, review should know, okay, only as a, as an issue, as a result of the absence of money. And by that, you see, now we are discussing this because the IMF had come. And of course, the IMF has made certain remarks about one or two of the flagship projects. My question is, why and and because we have to we live in a very political environment the very thing we are trying to prevent has now been somehow uh brought about by um you know the fact that you've gone for an imf program that is even worse because now people will say it is because of the imf program that you're actually now saying and in actual fact uh we'll review everything you know uh and then it becomes something that we are not discussing and it's not the best really as i said the government started off well, the first time, uh, by a Ministry for Monitoring and Evaluation. We, and I told you my experience working with them after we did our own reviews together. They realized that we were almost on the same page. Well, the ministers, the president had everybody's voices and said, okay, I'm going to review my, if you like, uh, cut down my government, my, the size of my government. And somehow that ministry was, uh, if you like, chopped, chopped mm -hmm. off. Um, it should have existed in some form or the other, even at the precedence. You know, um, I recall that during John Mamet's time, we, we suggested to him that uh, he should at least set up some sort of an assessor general of sort that reviews or evaluates big ticket projects, projects whose values are, I mean, are very huge. I mean, the multi-million dollar uh, types of uh, projects, so that at least you have someone who is reporting to the president directly who is working independent of all these monetary agencies and the various ministries, departments, and agencies. And it would be on that basis that certain reviews will be done. Uh, I can see that, uh, I, I think I have the president, John Mama, former president Mama, suggest that uh, his administration would ensure value for money when it comes to certain projects with a certain criteria, which indeed mentioned a figure. Um, these types of conversations are what we need in, in a democracy. So I, I, again, I have to reiterate my point. We should never have had the occasion to even politicize this particular matter because every project, and I say personal projects, uh, company projects, uh, corporate projects, uh, the country projects are always subjected to reviews. Why do you think we have all these indices that measure the effectiveness of governments, if it is for the World Bank, or essentially the Doing Business Index, which measures the extent to which governments are open about creating uh, free enterprise and, if, and, and what have you? And there are all manner of indices around the world. These are all types of reviews. Um, if the government had its own monitor of sorts, that would have been thoroughly useful. Okay. Um, and so, but, it, yeah. But, sure. but frankly, do you see any of these flagship programs being cancelled as a consequence of the review process? I mean, well, maybe when 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 the review, when the evaluation has been done, and we all see the report, I'm sure we're all making puts into it because at this point. Um, once these things are not done yet, we probably would not see what what we what we say one or two should be cancelled. And again, government can say, "Well, I was elected on your behalf, and I think that things are good for you." I would rather like to see the data. On the top of my head, I can say that a few of the ones that personally I've I've, I've sent people to go and see uh, up in the north as part of uh, some work we're doing, especially the dams project. I think it definitely needs a thorough review. Um, I mean, most of the dams are not really effective or productive, but they need to be looked at again. Of course, we can say the free SHS, everybody has been saying it, the review, uh, which means that some means testing ought to be done and, and what have you. So uh, counseling uh, maybe, I mean, depending on the data, the government has done its own work. Um, then we would say that, well, maybe you should cancel this one outright. Okay. Uh, but as we speak, uh, I can't put my head and say cancel, but certainly a review is in order. Okay. Uh, don't forget the Minister of Agri, the new one, had been making comments about the planning for food and jobs. He thinks that it should be reordered in a 
within that particular manner that would ensure it is more productive. So there you are. Right. Uh, already there are within governments and opportunities to have this conversation. All right. Franklin Kuji, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Have a good day, sir. My pleasure. Thank That's, you. Staff Mr. Franklin Kujo, he's the founding president of Imani Africa, talking to us about what he thinks about governments um, and undertaking a review of its flagship programs. Um, some say it is something that started recent. The information minister said it's not recent. It's been, it's been ongoing since last year. But of course, what is a fact is that the IMF has said that one of the government's flagship program, which is, which is the, um, uh, with this free SHS, has been poorly targeted. It's not delivering the kinds of outcomes that we want, learning outcomes that we want. And so um, that's, that we know for a fact. What we don't know for a fact is whether the review process has started now or yesterday. So Kojo Pankroma will set the record straight on that. Kojo, I believe you've joined us now. You're ready to talk to us now. Check. Maybe you may have to unmute so that we can we can we can hear. Hello, you. Moro. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, Kojo. Good, to, good to have you on the show. Good to be here. Good morning to Franklin and to your viewers as well. Wonderful. Now, before I proceed, uh, before we proceed with our conversation, let me say those of you who have, um, uh, how do you call it, comments or views or opinions or contributions that you want to make to the show. The number is zero five five um, three. That's thirty thousand thirty-five. So zero five five three zero 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 is five. So zero 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 three five. Uh, it will be displayed shortly on your screen so that you can also join the conversation. Now, could you look? I've heard some people say, under normal circumstances, we shouldn't even be having this conversation because in reviewing any kind of policy should have been a norm, uh, should have been a normal process. But we're here today because of the posture of the government. Um, anytime the government hears about review, it then interprets it to mean that a certain policy. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, social, a social policy program is going to be cancelled. Do you admit that perhaps you could have done better with your posture or your responses towards calls for review, whether by CSOs or by the former president, etc.? I think, uh, like Franklin rightly said, in any government uh, program or policy, you have a review element in it. You have an opportunity to monitor and evaluate and then uh, make continuous improvements. And as he rightly mentioned, right from the onset, we had a Ministry of Monitoring and Evaluation, which is now um, a Secretariat for Monitoring and Evaluation at the Presidency. And the job of that uh, then Ministry, now Secretariat, is to monitor and evaluate policies and programs of um, government and then make the necessary continuous, or make recommendations for the necessary continuous um, improvement. But the conversation about um, the review of free senior high school started four years ago and it was a very specific conversation. It was a comment made by the former president on a matter of reviewing it. And uh, President Akufuado responded and he was quite clear. And with your permission, I would like to read the text of what President Akufuado said. And the reason for which I think we should read some texts is because sometimes people paraphrase and the actual words that were said get lost. So here's what the president said. The president said, I am alarmed by this concept of review. This is because anytime our political opponents try anything of this sort, it leads the policy in question into a coma. We all remember the NHIS one term premium payment review pledge. Not only did the review not materialize, but they also succeeded in degrading the policy. And then the president went on further um, to say, I honestly suspect reviewing the free senior high school policy means collapsing it. And he's referring to when President Mahama uh, talks about it, means collapsing it. But I doubt the Ghanaian people will allow this brilliant policy to be collapsed by anyone. Now, the president initially invoked history of the last time the NDC um, had spoken of a review of a major program that the MPP administration had put in. That was an NHIS program. And how, at the end of the so-called review, the program was now in tatters and made the point that, so this kind of review that Mr. Mahama is talking about is one that he's worried about. This is the foundation of that uh, political back and forth conversation, just to put it in context. But it does not take away the fact that ordinarily in every government program, you will have a component for monitoring and evaluation 
and um, continuous review for um, improvements. And so you would find that in 2022 March, uh, the 21st of March, 2022, this is after the quarter one um, cabinet uh, in Pediasi, government caused me to um, make an announcement that uh, all the 16 flagship programs, including free SHS, were on the table for review, and that we're starting a process of reviewing them. And we explained at that time what we meant by this uh, review. First, as part of a continuous review exercise, Secondly, the parameters of these reviews are uh, on efficiency, on effectiveness, and on value for money. I heard you had a you know have a, had a conversation with Franklin on that one. So um, you will find that from the twenty first of March, twenty twenty two, despite the political back and forth between President Akufuado and former President Mahama on what he was of the view that uh, former President Mahama was referring to when he meant um, a review. The government itself on the 21st of March 2022 announced this. And this was widely reported, um, you know, across major news uh, platforms and online. Today, if you go and you search for it, you'll find all of those articles with the 2022 uh, tax on them. Fast forward, and by the way, in 2022, we're not under an IMF program. Fast forward 2023, when we have entered an IMF program. And it is not in any of the documents that the IMF is asking us to review. In fact, if you go to page, I think page 53 of the IMF um, program document, page 53, if I just may read it for uh, you to see, is where we have the letter of intent. This is the letter of intent from the government of Ghana, the International Monetary Fund, and it is under the signature of the Minister for Finance and the Governor of the Central Bank. It is in this letter of intent that we communicate what government has been doing. In fact, if you read, government outlines a number of things that we have been doing. And we communicate it to the fund that as part of the many things that we are doing, this review is one of the things that um, we are doing. And so I think earlier this week, when an attempt was made to suggest that it is the fund that is compelling us to do a review. When I was questioned about it on radio and television, the answer I gave was that, no, put it in context, it is not. Yes, there was a political debate between President Akufo and former President Mahama on um, what was meant by a review, especially uh, coming from um, the NDC uh, group. But the government itself has not shied away from the fact that uh, it intends to do um a review which review it announced in march 2022 in fact in december 2022 the minister for finance ken of also reiterated the parameters efficiency etc as the parameters for uh, this uh, review so it was just to put it in context that no um it is not a new matter it's a matter that had been prior announced and it has only now been communicated to the fund itself and uh, i think like franklin rightly mentioned these reviews are necessary. They will help you to uh, make some savings on matters of efficiency. They will help you um, on effectiveness to determine whether or not the uh, program you are rolling out is achieving its intended results. Is it being effective? And then on the question of value for money, um, if you do find that you are not getting a CD's worth for every CD you spend, then if you have to reduce um, you know, the spend so that you get whatever your spending is worth, or if you have to um, demand a commensurate benefit for whatever CD you are spending, then you do so. So that's a context within which we've been having this conversation. I see. Um, uh, that's, that, that's quite interesting. Um, you know, I asked you earlier about how you felt about the fact that we're even talking about a review of a policy when there should have been a normal uh, process. And you tried to sort of put it in context what the, what the uh, president was saying. But... I just, I just listened to you as you gave us an explanation about what the review should be and um, what the set objectives of it should be. I mean, could you, I'm just thinking, couldn't have really that been the response that perhaps even the president should have given, which is to say, well, thank you very much for asking us to review, but this is what has been happening since, because you're not telling us. And until this matter came up where the media started asking, oh, so all this, why you've been reviewing, all of this information that you're churning out, 
wasn't something that really a lot of Ghanaians were, were, I mean, knew about. That's why I'm saying that if you look back, perhaps the communication could have been better, not coming from you specifically, but I'm talking about your communicators, the president, the vice president. You don't think it could have been done much better rather than trying to be cynical about reviewing a process to say that, well, the review process is already ongoing, just as you have um, uh, intelligently, uh, how do you call it, um, explained. All right, um, I think we've lost Kojo Ponkrumah. We'll get him back. Um, we'll get him back on, on Zoom to, to just wrap up on this for in the next, in the next few minutes because it's a very important conversation. This conversation is important, and as I indicate, um, as I indicated, you know, a review process should have been a normal process. It should have been a normal exercise. And the taking, if you come up with any policy or program, you want to know how it is faring, areas that you need to fine tune, etc. But then it became a big topic just when, uh, because there were some critics, including the, including the former president, who felt certain things were not being done uh, rightly about the program, about some of these policies. And so government needed, needed to take a second look at the CSOs were talking about same. And a lot of government, government communicators then came out to say that, well, you know, all of you were saying that these programs must be reviewed. We're suspicious about what you're saying because we believe and we suspect that you're asking us to, uh, to uh, how to jettison these, uh, these policies. That's why I was asking Kujo. Now, Kujo, welcome back. We, we want to wrap, wrap up this in five minutes because we have a second. Uh, we have another conversation to have. But I'm saying that I'm still suggesting and I'm putting to you that perhaps the communication and the government posture when the calls for a review of these policies um, uh, came out, it's something that perhaps you may have to look at again. Because today, if you go on your uh, Facebook uh, wall, you, you do check, uh, monitor the reactions that have, have come since this whole talk about review. Because, oh, so you knew, that you knew that review is a normal process, and then and yet you're saying it meant cancellation, you know, and, and how politically all of a sudden review has meant different things when it should have been a normal process, just like you've explained quite intelligently. I mean, you've, you've communicated it in a way that I'm sure most Ghanaians would say, well, kudos. But that wasn't the kind of explanation we've got in the past. And there's some saying to you that perhaps, you, you, you know, looking back, with we'll the hindsight is 2020, it could have been done much better in terms of the responses that came when the calls for review were asked. You're saying the president's responses to the former president, Absolutely. or you're talking about the announcement that the government made um, on the uh, 21st of March 2022? Well, I'm talking about the president's response to a call for review and also some government communicators, which is very different from what you've done this morning. So, again, let me go back. It's, it's not different from what I've done this morning. What I've done this morning is exactly what we did on the 21st of March 2022. And I think we have to be clear with that one. Now, in the um, 20 or in the lead up to the 2020 election, the opposition candidate said something about review. And the president responded that when this particular person talks about review, there's a history. And the president actually gave the history. I just read it all out to you. Now, therefore, in that um, uh, 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 political conversation that took place, I think anybody who follows it can clearly understand what was being spoken about. And I'm saying that despite that, the government itself has on a number of occasions, I've given you my dates, 21st of March, 2022. I've given you the finance minister's dates, December, 2022. I've spoken to what we understand to be the proper way to go about this. That is obviously very different from the um, political conversation that took place uh, you know, in the run up to the 2020 election. And I think that really is not much to split hairs about. The question is, at the end of the day, what works for Ghana? That's what we've got to do. And if um, on the political stage, there are questions that need to be answered, I think between the former president and the president, that has been answered. But I just want to also make a quick point. I hear this conversation that the IMF says that learning outcomes are poor because free SHS is poorly targeted. And I always make the point that we have to go to the text. What exactly have they said? Because they haven't said that. If you go to page 12 of the document, with your permission, Moro, if I may read, it says, Ghana spends close to 4% of GDP on education with good results in terms of enrollment, but poor learning outcomes. Then it goes further to say, the flagship, so this way is now going to talk about free SHS specific. It says the flagship program, Free Senior High School, which covers the full cost of secondary education, has helped increase enrollment, but is poorly targeted. Then it goes on to say, key identified areas of potential improvement 
of education spending include strengthening primary education resource, better teacher training, and strong performance-based funding practices. And let me just go into it. Um, right from the beginning, go back to September, August, September 2017, the administration said that we were not going to target any specific cohort when it comes to the free senior high school program. And that the policy position of the administration from that time was to ensure that all persons who qualified will be given the opportunity to go. And again, uh, uh, around 2022, as we mentioned, five years down the line uh, after that, we made the point that we are now going to start a review of all of these programs. And the reason is that you want to start it off, like all other things, you start it off, and then you uh, look at its implications as you move forward. Now, when it comes to learning outcomes, if you want to see the learning outcomes for the senior high school program, respectfully, I think the body that publishes the learning outcomes is the West African Education Council, West African Examinations Council, WIEC. So moreover, the question is, what has WIEC been saying about education outcomes in the senior high school for the um, uh, period from 2017 till now? And I think if you ask your reporters and your researchers to pick up the WIAC data for you to share with your audiences, you will see that actually the outcomes have been going up and not down. It's been published by WIAC, it's been spoken to by the education minister. And so that the specific segment of senior high school, you will not find that WIAC says that learning outcomes are going down or are poor. Rather, at the basic level, what they call education poverty or learning poverty, and you recall that the education minister has made the point that now they are seeking to administer these tests because you want to be able to answer the question, how many pupils at, I think, class two or class four, class six, can read and do basic math? And it has been a cause of concern that um, we need to do way better because of what they call learning poverty. So if you read, I know there are people who want to strongly make the point that free SHS is not working. We have not said that free SHS will not be looked at. I've given you the parameters, efficiency, effectiveness, and value for money. But if you read the text of what the IMF has said, it says that when you look at education in Ghana in general, learning outcomes are poor. But when you come to free SHS specifically, their view is that it has been poorly targeted. And I've explained to you that their view that it has been poorly targeted is not at variance with the government view from 2017 that will not even target at all. We are not going to pick one and leave one. We're starting with everybody. And then as we go along, we will then do the necessary adjustments that need uh, to be made. So I think, again, in this area, it's important we take our time and read the full text of what the fund has said and then ask ourselves whether it is at variance with what the government of Ghana, the people of Ghana have been seeking to do and have been uh, uh, outlining that they'll be doing in the future. Now, um, could you just a final question to you, that is that the remote test possibility that any of these flagship programs... Can you speak up, please? Uh, can, you, can you hear me now? Hello? Yes, yeah. go ahead. Is there the remote test possibility that any of these flagship programs will be cancelled after the review process is done? And how many of these flagship programs are currently under review. Okay, so I'll take you, let me take the second question first. And to answer that second question, I'll take you back to the 21st of March, 2022. The announcement we made was that all of them are on the table. Okay, so to answer your question, how many? And that's 16, 16 of them. 16, yes. Now to your second question, uh, is there the possibility that any of them will be canceled? You see, when it comes to communication, you can say one thing, but people in their minds and in their heads hear the interpretation or the decoding of what you have said. So you notice you yourself that as we are talking about review, your mind quickly goes to cancellation, which is why you're asking the question that is there the possibility that some of them will be canceled afterwards? I have not used the word cancellation. You had not used it earlier. But even as we are talking about review, because there's been a history to some of these things in our country, you see how your mind quickly went there and you asked Franklin about it as I watched on television and you asked me about it. This is the same impression President Akufuado sought to highlight and correct 
four years ago but could you, could you, when um, could you, mr muhammad when, when, when first policies, spoke about i'll come to your specific i'll come to your specific don't worry i'll come to your specific mm. this is the same impression that president akufuado sought to highlight and correct four years ago because whenever you use um uh, words or expressions sometimes in communication they are called dog whistles you haven't said the thing specifically but it communicates something in the minds of people now specifically we are doing this review on three parameters efficiency effectiveness and value for money efficiency refers to whether or not you can make some savings in the uh, spend that you are executing on a particular item effectiveness is what you are talking about whether or not the stated objective is being achieved so the question is if we find that the stated objective is not being achieved with a particular program what will be the recommendation I think what we should do is to let them complete these um, reviews. And if they come back and tell us that, listen, when we did the review of, let's say, one village, one down, we have found out that it is not effective. For the monies that were spent on it, it is not able to um, um, produce and achieve these, um, you know, um, dugouts or dams that will serve the agrarian communities in that area. And therefore, our recommendation is that it should be discontinued. We can all flow from there. If, for example, um, they come back and they say, well, free senior high school is effective, but for it to be efficient, there needs to be means testing. Then it means that you're not going for a cancellation. You are now going for some efficiency measures that ensure that you are able to make savings because of the means testing that you would have introduced. So to answer your question finally and simply, I think they should finish with the uh, review and when they uh, produce the outcome of these uh, reviews, as it is factored into the 2024 fiscal program, we'll be in a position to assess whether or not the, 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 the justifications and the recommendations that they have made, which have been adopted by government in the 2024 fiscal program, make sense. All right. Kujo, thank you very much for joining us. It's been uh, a pleasure talking to you. Moro, thank you very much for the opportunity. All right, then. That's Akujo Pankromai's Information Minister, uh, setting the record straight and clarifying government's um, exercise of reviewing its flagship programs and what actually that entails. Uh -huh.